So how do we turn all of this into a distributed secure programming languages, language where an object in one VAT can asynchronously send a message to an object in another VAT? So we're focused now on the VAT level and on the protocols below and above it, the IBC protocol and the CAPTP protocol. When you have multiple VATs in a single chain, the VATs together are considered part of what we call a swing set. A VAT is a unit of synchrony where VATs interact only asynchronously with each other. But a swing set is a unit of determinism. All of the VATs within the same swing set interact with each other through the swing set nanokernel. And the order of message delivery among the VATs within the swing set is deterministic so that all the validators replicating the same computation get the same order and proceed in the same manner. How is it that an object in one VAT can effectively hold a capability to an object in another VAT? Well, these trapezoids are what, are what is called a C-list. Each trapezoid is a C-list, which is a table mapping from integer indices to capabilities, to object references. This notion of a C-list is most familiar from Unix with file descriptor indices. A program running under Unix uses a number, a file descriptor index, to talk to the kernel about a file descriptor. The kernel has a table per process associating those indices with file descriptors. And when one process sends a file descriptor to another process, it might arrive at the other process with a completely unrelated file descriptor index, but it's still the same file descriptor. And that all makes sense because the kernel has a separate table per process. In like manner, our nanokernel has a separate table, these trapezoids, for each VAT. And each VAT internally also has such a table facing the kernel to do the bookkeeping to speak the kernel's language. And the result is that the interface between a VAT and the nanokernel is a data-only interface. As a result, the individual VATs don't have to be restricted to JavaScript. Any sandboxed, deterministic, process-like mechanism can be plugged in as long as the computation inside that mechanism can invoke the swing set nanokernel API. And WASM in particular can easily import and export the interfaces needed to interact compatibly with the, with the swing set nanokernel and thereby participate in the system. What about when an object on one machine effectively holds a capability to an object somewhere else, let's say on another chain. Well, each swing set has a special VAT we call the comms VAT, where the comms VAT engages in the same trick. Just as the nanokernel sitting between a bunch of VATs has to have separate C-lists facing each VAT, the comms VAT has to have one such table facing its kernel in order to get to the other VATs within its swing set. And then it has another table for each other platform that it's securely communicating with. So of the swing set in the upper left, the table facing right is the table for talking to the, the swing set, the platform on the right and likewise with the table facing down. And object messages need to get sent from, from the left side to the right side in a secure manner in order to bring about this interchain object communication. Well, now we have several problems we need to solve. The first thing is that every chain 
has its own unique theory of legitimacy, has its own unique theory of what it means for computation to have legitimately happened in a particular way on the chain such that all participants should agree that that was the result of the chain. The other interesting problem is that chains, computational chain is not normally thought of as sending a message. It's thought of as receiving messages and it's thought of as being observed by participants. So we can make use of that observation by creating a fabric, a network of relayers between these chains to to carry traffic from one chain to another. So each of these pipes represents an IBC channel. And the channel watches the chains on each side, watches uh, the chain on the left to look at the log to see if a message got logged that's marked as a message intended for delivery to another chain. And when it sees that, it relays it to a broadcast mechanism. Now the broadcast mechanism, if every chain has its own theory of legitimacy, then how do we deal with the heterogeneous requirements of having to speak to different chains in different ways and having to validate different chains in different ways? Well, every time somebody constructs a chain architecture, they also construct a light client. And the light client embodies the logic for speaking to the chain they're co-designed with and for validating that something that allegedly happened on the chain actually happened on the chain. So this broadcast device here for broadcasting messages that have been observed into the chain on the right is using the logic from the light client of the chain on the right. And there's an additional layer of signature happening so that the relayer itself can be held responsible and charged for its actions, which I'm not going to go into further. But the relayers are not themselves trusted. So the chain on the, on the right uses the light client logic of the chain on the left in order to validate that messages that the relayer claims are from the chain on the left should actually be legitimately treated as from that chain. And having validated that, those messages can now proceed into the swing set and turn into object messages. So these outer cylinders are the IBC layer, the object messages on these capabilities going within the pipe, that's the CAPTP layer built on the IBC layer. And now I'll take questions on that layer. So the complexity of swing sets is only introduced in order to facilitate communication between chains. If, if uh, between, between chains. The, 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 the between chain communication, that happens by virtue of IBC and CAPTP. Swing set is for communication between multiple VATs within one chain. And the reason to have a larger deterministic unit than a single VAT, a single VAT is a synchronous unit, you could create a valid architecture where each VAT was also the largest deterministic unit, and then to have all of the, intera all of the asynchronous interaction between VATs itself be non-deterministic as well. The problem is that that means you would have to pay the costs of a consensus mechanism. Every time you resolve the non-determinism into a deterministic message or uh, arrival order of messages. And there's nothing to be gained for multiple VATs within a single chain. There's nothing to be gained by letting them run non-deterministically with regard to each other. So by 
collecting them together into an overall deterministic set of vats with the swing set, uh, we now only need the consensus mechanism with, with regard to the arrival order of messages arriving at the chain as a whole. So, at the risk of a follow-up question, so this means that as an author of a program, I would need, uh, as an author of a module, I would want to know whether the modules that I am also talking to either belong to the same swing set that I am in or belong to a separate swing set. Like, this is something that I'm going to mentally need to keep in mind. No. No. The VAT is also the unit of portability and migration. A VAT that started up in one swing set, eventually with more engineering, uh, can be pickled and moved and restarted elsewhere with all of the capabilities being forwarded to make it to the VAT's new location. So the logic of the object computation within a VAT should be completely independent of what chain it's running on. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain actually why that turns out to be very important as we get to the world of smart contracting it has to do with this issue of mutual credibility. Is a smart contract that starts off locally can be mutually credible to a small community, but as the smart contract proceeds, it might need to become credible to a larger community. And at that point, if you have agreement among the participants to migrate it to a more public place, we'll be able to do so and have the computation itself continue. So the, the VATs themselves should only be cognizant of what's in the VAT versus what objects are outside the VAT. And everything else is ideally a question of deployment rather than of object semantics. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the requirements of that light client in terms of, um, so I think the best analogy I can think of is like the Lightning Network. They're trying to implement this protocol Neutrino, which is basically uh, kind of like a bloom filter. So if you imagine every capability being identified by a hash, you can put these all into a bloom filter and kind of, uh, in a light client context, get some state updates just for your set of capabilities. Is that what you would need out of this sort of light client, or is it a little bit different than that. Uh, Brian, uh, say, uh, can he hand in that microphone to you to have you answer <laughs> that? Um, yeah, uh, uh, briefly, um, briefly, each of these yeah. different chains is going to be following the other ones. It's specifically following the set of messages, the set of IBC messages coming from that chain. So the messages need to be created in a way that you can very efficiently make sure this is the next message in that sequence. There are no missing messages. And you'll have a light client on the receiving side just enough to make sure that the relayer supply data really does represent the subset of all the events on the sending chain that represent messages being sent over that channel. Okay, and this will be the last question before we go into the next section. Are the um, COMVATs instantiated within uh, a chain or around the chain? And, and so I can imagine two scenarios, one where there's a COMVAT that's actually a contract within a chain, receiving messages and multiplexing between them and sending them to the other contracts, or a program that is actually receiving the IBC message and then demuxing and then sending to the right contract. Um, kind of curious around that and then, may, and then the um, message semantics that you need uh, to maybe plug in entirely new systems into this. So the comms VAT is written as a very specialized program uh, and it's written to do this coordination with particular other chains such that the other VATs within, the within that swing set as well as the swing set kernel, are not actually even aware that there are other chains. All of the awareness that there, that there exists other chains are really the responsibility of the comms VAT. So to the other VATs within the swing set, it's as if the entire world of other chains is inside the comms VAT. In like manner, to each VAT, it's as if the entire rest of the world is inside the kernel that it's talking to. Uh, 
So there's these levels of virtualization. One reason that that's actually very nice is that there's nothing privileged about the comms vat other than that it's given access to the network and it's given the ability to use certain cryptographic keys in order to speak on the network. Uh, a separate comms vat can be created and introduced and plugged into the same kernel in the same way and have different logic without, any, without anything breaking, without that violating any assumptions. Does that mean there's a comms vat per system, per kernel? Or is a comms vat of one kernel capable of speaking across many communication systems? Uh, there's a comms vat uh, for, there's one comms vat per swing set that speaks to all of the other systems. By convention, as I mentioned, you could introduce a separate comms vat to speak to other systems, but that's not how we do it.